Brian Flores, former head coach for the Miami Dolphins, has filed a lawsuit alleging racial discrimination in the hiring practices. Um, he even has a text from one coach, Belichick, who apparently saw Brian in his phone and thought it was Brian Debo and text congratulations <laughs> by accident to Brian Flores, which he's saying is proof that because he had not had his interview yet, that his interview was a sham. They were just, as he said, checking off the check, just checking the boxes for the Rooney right. rule, bring you in. And then he talked about an interview he had with the Broncos, where he said they didn't even send in the decision makers and it looked like they had been out drinking all night. And they came in and it was very unprofessional. Um, the Broncos are now selling the team. <laughs> which is somewhat, I don't know if that's coincidental or what. And you know what else? Seems I heard rumors of that. I heard rumors of that. The, another potential coincidence or, or, or impact of this is Jim Harbaugh saying, nah, I think I'm going to stay in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to leave this alone right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too much. It's too much going on. There's too much going on. And it's like, <laughs> Kirk Cousins, nah. Nah, that's a <laughs> he was listening to Ben and Barry. He's like, I ain't gonna listen to that Ben guy. I'm listening to the Barry guy. <laughs> um, Harbaugh could make him better. Probably so. I love. I like Harbaugh as a play caller. Yeah, probably so. You know, probably so. But you know, Bro. Uh, again, it, you know, the, and and both Harbaugh's, you know, like running quarterbacks, which Kirk Cousins is not exactly a running quarterback. So I don't know if that would. Be that's okay. That's he wasn't a running running quarterback when he played. He can handle. He could handle Kirk Cousins. I, I just I like both Harbaugh's. Okay. Uh, I I really like John because I think John, his 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 thought process. I like his thought process. I like the fact that he's not stuck in a system. That he was able to adapt his system. I know it wasn't just him, and I know it was Greg Roman too. But it was his idea to come up with something. This is our quarterback. It's Lamar Jackson. You know what he does. You know what he's good at. You know what his weaknesses are. Let's tinker with his offense a little bit so we can get the best out of him. And they did that. Well, they, they did that. But what we're talking about now is the lawsuit. And I want to mention one other thing. I kept getting the feeling as I'm sitting there and I'm seeing these floods of announcements about, you know, the – you know, the Bears are going to hire this guy or the Giants are going to hire this guy. And, you know, and I'm like, it seems like they're rushing to get their hirings done. And I wasn't seeing any really a lot of black quarterbacks getting hired, not saying that there weren't any. I mean, coaches, rather black coaches, maybe in the assistant coach or the defensive coordinator levels or, or the coordinator levels, I should say. Right. But I just get the, got the feeling it's like they're really rushing to, to do a lot of hiring. It's like, you, you know, you guys really in that much of a rush? And then the lawsuit came out, and I started thinking maybe they were just trying to get it all in, you know, as quickly as possible so nobody would notice what they were doing because of all the hype around the Super Bowl and all the Pro Bowl and all the hype that's going on. They could slip all of their, their coaching decisions in without having them really uh, be the only news for the day there's much more overshadowing news so that's kind of what i suspected i'm not saying that you know again it's only a suspicion i have no particular proof but they were doing a lot of hiring and a lot of announcements were coming out and you know i'm like Hell. Uh, your super bowls not even played yet i'm sure you want maybe some of the coaches from the super bowls you know they, they were talking yeah, but you to can't guys. but you can't talk to them until they're done right so you know that's what i'm saying you would if you want them then you kind of need to wait a little bit and what's the big hurry i mean why did you need to get it done what's another week two weeks let's say even a month or so to get to get it right this time well the the teams first of all I don't think there was a big hurry as far as all of the teams that were looking for new head coaches all hurrying. The teams who did hire new coaches 
did seem to get their decisions made quickly. So I, I do uh, agree with you in that aspect. But there's still a lot of jobs still open. There's still a lot of teams that have not made decisions yet. But the teams that did make decisions did seem to do them quickly, which tells me that they had their eye on the guy that they wanted pretty much all along. Uh, I know I'm almost positive that the Giants did. As soon as they picked in the, the NFC Bills. <laughs> yeah, right. As soon as they picked the assistant general manager of the Buffalo Bills to become their general manager, I knew they were going to take Dave Ball as a head coach. I said it a couple weeks ago. That that's a no-brainer. So in my mind, any other interview that they do is just so, you know, they can kind of go through the motions. Maybe they can convince somebody. I thought maybe they bring Flores in and convince him to be the DC. I didn't know what they were going to try to do, but I was pretty sure that any black coaches that they brought in for interviews were simply to satisfy the Rooney rule, as a lot of teams have done. And just, the, the just real, remind people what the Rooney rule is real quick. I'm pretty sure, and I'm not 100% because I haven't read it and looked over it, but from what I can remember, the Rooney rule basically dictates that you have to at least interview, I think, three people of color or three minorities or three, whatever you want to call it, you have to at least bring them in for interviews. And I believe the spirit of the Rooney rule was to give people an opportunity that may not ordinarily get it because even the owners realize they know who they are. They, they know who they are. They know they're part of kind of a, a good old boy network, okay? But uh, I think the spirit of the rule was like, if we make you bring these guys in and interview them, you might find a gem. You might find out something about one of these guys that you normally would have ignored. But now that you have to bring them in and you bring them in and you give them a real interview, you find out that, hey, this could be our guy. I believe that was the spirit of the rule. But as usual, people try to circumvent the rule. And basically, they'll set up. Oh, it's easy. All you got to do is bring in uh, Todd Bowles, Eric Bieniemy, and Leslie Frazier. Give them interviews, send them home, and then pick the guy you want. It's too <laughs> easy. It's too easy. Yeah, yeah. That, that, and that's, that's part of the challenge. We, we talked about that point of separation and the decision-making. You, you might have a GM – and he might pick the players, but generally the GM doesn't pick the coach without ownership being involved. So or that ownership, point, or ownership picking a GM and then saying it's your job to get me the right coach, which was easy with the Giants. It was easy; they already worked together. And, and yeah, so that that you know you can see that connection, and that's part of the challenge is that you're dealing with social networks and dealing with connections. You know who you it's about who you know as much as anything else. Yeah. Um, but we also talked about the fact that when the Kaepernick thing hit, the owners showed themselves to be Trump Republicans, and I'm using the word Trump because I'm talking about supremacy here, the concepts of white supremacy, the concepts that Trump was about, and they were about him. And that didn't bother them. And, it, and all of a sudden now, because Colin Ka Kaepernick took a knee, you know, they wanted to, you know, he was all of a sudden out of the league, you know, and he couldn't be tolerated. And so, um, so much has happened since then relative to the league trying to show good faith 
yeah um, relative to these hiring you know relative to um social the social agenda improvement you know improvement uh, you know we going against racism uh, helmets that say end racism on the back of it so all of the the rhetoric is going in the right direction they spend a lot of money in the right direction you know with the you know with the um social inspired change and all of that but that room up there at the top did not change that much and i don't believe that their mindset has changed that much and so that's why it's going to be really interesting to see how this thing shakes out um i saw a, a stat and it kind of came out at an interesting time because uh, of what's going on right here. And, you know, when I was watching one of the uh, business shows, they were talking about the, uh, the net worth and the racial wealth gap. Um, in 2016, the median white family had more than 10 times the wealth of the median black family. The racial wealth gap between black and white families grew from about 100,000 in 1992 to 154,000 in 2016. Um, they are saying also, you know, that uh, the net worth for the black family is about 28K. The average white family, it's 178K. So the reason that I mentioned this is because the NFL and what's going on with the NFL is just symbolic of what's been going on in corporate America for years and years and years. Um, and the results are, are the lack of wealth that, that, you know, it's getting generated. Just like the one guy on TV said, when he was talking about Brian Flores, he said, Brian, he said, my success was because of Brian Flores. You know, he was everything. I mean, this was a, the white guy. This wasn't the black guy that was saying this. And he says, and my, and, and I'm sad because if he doesn't coach anymore, some football players coming up are going to be denied the opportunity to be coached by such a great guy. Right. You know, so again, you know, not providing the type of support that should be there on the, on a highly diverse level. And finally, the one stat that really knocked me out, they were saying that if that um, disparity in wealth between white and black, if that was equaled out, there would be a $5 trillion increase in our um, gross national product just, just in leveling out the wealth gap itself. So it, it makes would so be much sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, racism is hate. It's an emotion. You know, it's not something that's really logical. We see it too often and what's going on. And I don't think a lot of these owners are necessarily active haters. Just philosophically, the way they're aligned, it yeah. kind of just comes out. You know, it's like when, when um, Trump was telling people about, you know, the suburbs and he was you know, the, the the diversification of the suburb. He was trying to warn the white families that, you know, this is not going to be good for you. It's just, it's some, it's that philosophy that's still left over, you know, from the previous years and from the racism that, that was always there. It's still there because it's nothing more than hate. It hasn't really changed. So uh, it's going to be interesting again to see what happens. Did you say that they've already come back and said, number one, that they're, they're going to fight this, that they're, they're not, you know, number one. Number two, he also said, and this is, I know we talked about that. They offered, Flores said he was offered money to lose. $100,000 to tank games per game. How often did we talk about the, it looked like the management was trying to tank and Flores wasn't having it. Yes. Yes. Did we say that we how many times? That. Tanking for Tua, we called it. People talked about tanking for Tua. So other folks saw it, but we were like, dude, he's not going for that. 
that's not in his DNA, bro. He's trying to win games. You hired the wrong guy. <laughs> and $100,000 per game didn't change his mind. And once they realized that, the wheels were already set in motion to get rid of him. So what does he do? Starts off slow, gets his act together, gets the team's act together, and they rip off eight out of eight out of their last nine. They win. They win. And he gets fired. And he gets fired. Two winning seasons in a row when they hadn't had won the previous five or more. Good point. No reason for him to be fired. None. And when they asked them, why did you let him go? They said, well, he wasn't talking to this guy and he had a bad relationship with the GM and this and that and the other. Yeah, he did. Because you're trying to get him to do things that are against his principles. And he wasn't having it. I got nothing to say to you. You offer me $100,000 to lose it. I'm not losing. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. I think this suit's going to go. I think it's going to be big. And I think he's going to win. I, what he's going to be a huge settlement. This is crazy, man. Everybody's talking about him not being able to coach like he lost his job. But if he gets this settlement, <laughs> it'll yeah, take he'll care be, of that. He'll be okay. They'll he'll be, be okay. Yeah, um, he'll be okay. He's already earned a, a nice little bit of money, and I'm sure he'll be okay. But the thing with the Broncos, why lie about that? Why would you make up that story? That's so true. You, um, the, the, the former coach for the Browns is now saying that they offered him money to lose. Yes, he said he's going to join the suit. I, I, I just saw that on my timeline. Hugh it's Jackson so may join happening. Brian LaFlora's suit. It's so much happening. It, it, it's absolutely amazing. Um, all right, 